Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our special live coverage of the Great American Eclipse brought to you by the Brian Lamb School of Communication. It is Monday, April 8th, and I'm Sebastian Lux. And I'm Grace Hobbs. We are coming to you from the campus of Purdue University. Behind us is an engineering fountain, and we are surrounded by fellow Boilermakers who all wanted to catch this rare cosmic event. So giving a, just a little bit of a timeline of what we got going on right now, it is currently 146. The partial eclipse is set to start in just about three, or excuse me, rather five minutes here at 151. Now there is going to be a timeline, obviously. You're going to be able to see different parts of it throughout the next couple of hours. Um, we should have a, a full viewing angle of it at what time, Grace? At about 151, we should get that few viewing angle and then the totality of the eclipse will be about 98% starting at 3.05 and will last till about 3.09 here again in West Lafayette. So with uh, West Lafayette, there are about 16 total locations where we are going to have full totality across the state of Indiana, the longest of which is going to be lasting about four minutes and five seconds here in uh, Vincennes, Indiana. So if we have a current live view shot of the sun if we want to go ahead and take a look at that currently. It now, may look a little bit darker um, through that camera. However, it is light. There aren't really too many clouds out today, but we do have a protective lens over that camera just to ensure that nothing gets damaged. Once again, we do have a lens on that camera pointed up at the sun. So if it does look a little bit off, that is why. To some degree, unless you've been living under a rock, you probably know the basics of what a solar eclipse is. Well, it's the moon blocking out the sun with the shadow hitting the Earth, correct? Basically, but to get a little bit more in depth, here's an eclipse explainer from the experts at NASA. On April 8th, there are a variety of activities here at Purdue University and in Indianapolis to celebrate. We asked students what their plans were for this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. I say I was going to go to a few of the activities around campus. Uh, my birthday is the next day, so my parents might be coming into town, so I was going to see if they wanted to watch it, too. Awesome. And what about your friends? Have they talked about the eclipse at all? Have you heard about it in your classes? Yeah, say so a few of my classes have actually been canceled for it. Um, my classes or my friends have had classes canceled or they... On April 8th, 2024, portions of the United States will get to enjoy the sight of a total solar eclipse. The last time this took place was back in August of 2017. So this is a good time to refresh our memory as to what's going to happen, why it occurs, and let you know where you can watch the show in the sky. A solar eclipse occurs when the moon moves between the Earth and the sun, blocks the sun's light, and casts a shadow on the Earth. When the moon completely covers the bright disk of the sun, that's a total solar eclipse. This differs from a lunar eclipse, where the moon moves behind the Earth, so it's now the Earth blocking the sun's light on the moon, creating a shadow on it with a red tint. To remember the difference, just remember what object gets darker. With a solar eclipse, it's the sun, and during a lunar eclipse, it's the moon. Because the moon's shadow is relatively small, a total solar eclipse is a pretty rare event to see. In order to do so, you have to be on the sunny side of the planet and within the path of the moon's shadow. And that path is affected by the Earth's rotation, moon's orbit, and where they are in their orbit around the sun. There are a lot of moving parts that go into creating this incredible sight. And speaking of parts, during a solar eclipse, the moon is actually casting a shadow consisting of two parts, the umbra and penumbra. The moon's umbra is the part of the moon's shadow where the entire sun is blocked by the moon. In space, it's a cone extending about 232,000 miles behind the moon. It's when the small end of this cone hits the Earth that a total solar eclipse can be seen. Those factors are why only a limited number of locations on Earth get to actually see it. So, if you find your area in the path of totality this year, treasure the site, because on average, that same spot on Earth won't see another total solar eclipse for 375 years. The area around Carbondale, Illinois, however, has hit the cosmic jackpot, getting to experience this year's eclipse, as well as the one from 2017. But their next view of a total solar eclipse won't happen until the year 2343. When you check out an eclipse map that depicts the path of totality, keep this in mind. 
While many maps will show a circle representing the moon's shadow, the true shape of the umbra is more like an irregular polygon with slightly curved edges. This is due to the fact that the moon isn't a smooth sphere. It has mountains, valleys, and craters on its surface, all of which affect the passing sunlight and shape of the resulting shadow. NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter spacecraft, which has been orbiting the moon since 2009, has provided scientists with incredibly detailed photographs, terrain maps, and other sets of data that have allowed us to better understand the shape of the moon's surface. This, in turn, has given us the ability to create more finely detailed maps depicting which specific areas on Earth lie within a solar eclipse's path of totality. Regions outside the narrow path, depending on their distance from it, will get to witness a partial eclipse to varying degrees. As you can see, the penumbra shadow passes over almost all of North and Central America, as well as Greenland, Iceland, and the Western British Isles. This 2024 total solar eclipse is therefore giving millions of people the opportunity to share in this rare and dynamic interaction between our Earth So Grace, obviously we've experienced something like this before with a partial eclipse, uh, eclipse rather. Um, tell me a little bit about your experience with that a couple years ago when that happened for you. Yeah, so it was my freshman year of high school and my whole entire school handed out free eclipse glasses and we were able to go outside in our parking lot, which we had blocked off that day to witness the eclipse. Very fittingly, I was actually in my earth and space <laughs> class during that. So before the eclipse, we were watching kind of a time lapse of that. What about you? Were you able to experience the eclipse that year? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it was also my freshman year of high school. Um, funny enough, I was in my biology class um, and uh, my high school had a rather large courtyard and we were able to get all the students out there able to uh, pass out glasses and really just enjoy the experience. Uh, we were out there for about 30 minutes to an hour and it was just a really nice day and so we were able to just view that and really, really cool experience. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, the next total eclipse that will be spanning coast to coast um, in the U.S. will be in the year 2045. Um, so a couple of years away, so definitely a very cool experience that we are having today. We do have a whole, whole lot of people out here at the engineering fountain, and we want to go ahead and pan the camera over and just look at that. A couple hundred people out here currently right now, a lot of people sitting down, a lot of people standing. Um, people of all ages, not just college students. Um, Definitely see some picnic blankets, got some lawn chairs out here. I'm sure people brought snacks, drinks, all of that good stuff to sit here and enjoy our partial eclipse here in West Lafayette. Absolutely. And just a reminder to make sure that if you are viewing the sun, to make sure you are wearing those glasses. Um, definitely do not want anybody going blind here today. So there are a lot going on around campus, obviously. There is a line just over our shoulder here to the right where they are passing out glasses. And it sounds like, Grace, they're still doing admissions tours today? Yeah, so Purdue does admissions tours every day during the week, and that did not stop for the solar eclipse. So the admissions office actually ordered around 700 wow. glasses for the families, the prospective students, students as well as our tour guides here on campus. So we might see some as they do often pass by the engineering fountain as it is our most popular fountain here on campus. Definitely a cool thing with Purdue's um, ties into the whole NASA and space as well that they're being able to experience that while on a visit uh, here today. Absolutely. So we actually um, spoke to a couple students and Ellie Acres spoke to students to find out where they would be viewing the eclipse here today of activities here at Purdue University and in Indianapolis to celebrate. We asked students what their plans were for this once in a lifetime opportunity. I say I was going to go to a few of the activities around campus. Uh, my birthday is the next day so my parents might be coming into town so I was going to see if they wanted to watch it too. Awesome. And what about your friends? Have they talked about the eclipse at all? Have you heard about it in your classes? Yeah, say so a few of my classes have actually been canceled for it. Um, my classes or my friends have had classes canceled or they were claiming that they weren't going to go to class anyway because they really <laughs> wanted to see it. Or they're going to Indy so they can see it because that's going to be in total darkness. One of Purdue's largest plans for the eclipse is a viewing event at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. The partnership with the Motor Speedway and NASA will feature Purdue experts, alumni, and students at an ideal viewing location in the path of totality. Purdue student Sarah Augustine says her friends may skip class to make it to the Speedway. My friends and I were going to uh, skip class if it's not canceled and go to the raceway uh, to see it. It doesn't happen that often. It's pretty rare. I think that's, that's worth a little skipping class. 
Another student, Connor Adamek, tells us that he will be giving a campus tour during the eclipse. Have they given you any advice on how that's going to work to be giving a tour during the total solar eclipse? Unfortunately, no, and I kind of wish they would. I was like, I'm not sure how to do it. Like, I, we should be paying attention to campus, but instead we should look at it as once in a lifetime event. So I don't blame them for not looking. I just, I don't know what I'm going to do about it. Yeah, you may have to have some glasses on hand to provide for them so no one's looking at the sun and having a good experience for their first tour of Purdue. Right, that's what I've, I've heard. Maybe we might give them glasses or something. I don't know, but um, it sounds interesting. Like, it's something you can't ignore. You know. We definitely got some people to interview. All right, that's good. <laughs> So in addition to our setup here um, near the engineering fountain, we do have a crew roaming uh, about to talk to Boilermakers who chose to take part in this event here on campus. Let's go now to reporter John Waterworth, who's out among the crowd. How's it going, John? That's exactly right. Thank you, Sebastian and Grace. We're standing here at the engineering fountain at Purdue. Uh, I managed to track some guys down that actually went to high school around here, so they experienced uh, some totality from the last eclipse. Uh, could you guys tell me a little bit about that? What was that like? Uh, yeah, it was actually kind of cool. We got to get out of class. We went out to the parking lot and we had our, like, our glasses and everything. Uh, I think it was like partial, so it was only like maybe half the sun. But other than that, I think it was pretty cool. I'm looking forward to this one now. What about you? It was pretty cool. It was kind of underwhelming. They kind of hyped it up a lot. I feel like this one should be pretty cool, though. Uh, the moon actually just started covering up the sun. Uh, I don't know if you guys have taken a look, but it's a pretty interesting situation. So Purdue has a very interesting opportunity today. I don't, I don't know if you're aware, but we're playing in the nationals, uh, national championship for uh, basketball. Uh, if we win, I mean, it's going to be a historic moment. What do you guys think is going to happen during that game? Oh man, I really just hope we uh, we take it home, you know, take home the victory. I'm really excited for it. And on an eclipse day, man, that'd be crazy. Uh, how was how was your guys' travel plans today? I assume you, you guys go to the university. Do you, do you go to the university? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I go here. I was just here, but I know this guy traveled. No, I I don't go here. I uh, like two counties over, and it's traffic was awful. I got gotcha. you. People from out of state all over the place. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you go to Purdue. How many of your classes got canceled today? Uh, well, I was fortunate to only have one class today, but it got canceled, so I'm thankful for that. Yeah, so yeah. kind of like a three-day weekend. Yeah. Sadly, my class did not get canceled today. As you see, I'm standing here in front of you. Uh, I want to ask you guys, like, what are your plans for getting out of here? I know traffic's going to be ridiculous. I, as you can see, there's a ton of people here. Uh, what's the plan? What are you guys up to after this? Uh, I'm probably going to walk around, uh, enjoy uh, some of the nice weather, actually, for once. I don't have to get out of town, so I'm going to stick around. I think he might, too. Yeah, I'm probably going to have to sit, sit around because there's going to be too many people here. I've, he I've heard a lot of uh, traffic specifically in the Indy area with Purdue and NASA hosting an event at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. I don't know if you guys knew about that. Yeah. But, yeah, we're actually in this huge area of totality, and it's going to be a very interesting situation. Let's see. I froze up. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is, I think this is way longer than two minutes. Um, so I know you. I know you guys have talked about your glasses. You got glasses, right? You're gonna oh, yeah. be checking this out. So as I said earlier, uh, it just started. So stay tuned in with us, and we'll catch you later. So the solar eclipse is also a huge money-making opportunity um, for many businesses. CNN's Stephanie Elam takes a look at how those in the path of totality stand to rake in a big economic impact. Four minutes of daytime darkness across America <laughs> is turning into a massive bright spot for businesses. From a mass wedding in Arkansas, to sold out hotels in Dallas. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, since last year. As the eclipse charts the American sky from Texas through the Midwest and on into the Northeast, it will trail with it an economic impact of up to one and a half billion dollars. A big chunk of that boosting the Lone Star State, which will experience the eclipse for a fraction of an hour.
I call this the most profitable 22 minutes in Texas history. At the intersection of the 2017 and 2024 events, Carbondale, Illinois is dubbed the crossroads of the eclipse. That's where Southern Illinois University will cancel classes and fill its 15,000 seat stadium with sky gazers. A local cafe is serving up eclipse cookies, lots of them. We'll probably end up doing around 60 dozen a day. For those who want to get closer to the action, Delta and Southwest are offering special flights during the eclipse, while United is giving out eclipse glasses. I just remember how awestruck everybody was at the time. Roger Sarkis and his wife Alyssa were inspired to start Eclipse Glasses USA after the 2017 eclipse. Their sales of protective spectacles to view the upcoming celestial spectacle exploded on Monday, Sarkis says. He now expects they will sell out again. We actually sold out of our original inventory in February, so I bought more inventory, and I think we're on track to sell 500,000 pairs. So this is beyond what you ever thought was possible. <laughs> yes. But all kinds of businesses are getting in on the skyrocketing excitement with Eclipse specials. From Krispy Kreme's Eclipse Donut, featuring an Oreo cookie in the middle, to Sun Chips Solar Eclipse Chips, that will only be available for 4 minutes and 27 seconds, the length of totality. Perhaps a once-in-a-lifetime experience with stellar money-making opportunities. The crowd is still growing here by our engineering fountain. I do see quite a few people in their Purdue gear. Absolutely. I wouldn't know why. Is there anything going on tonight that might be the reason a lot of people are in their Purdue gear? Rather big game tonight as, uh, of course, Purdue's taking on UConn in the national championship game tonight, which, of course, is very exciting. Like we said earlier, the crowd seems to be growing even more just by the minute. Um, a lot of people just laying out on blankets, a lot of chairs right now, and a lot of people just standing around watching what is going on currently. Um, as we can see, people walking behind us right now. And just to be sure, let's look up, Grace, really quickly. And it is begin to covering the sun just a little bit. Again, yeah. just a reminder to please wear eye protection if you are indeed looking up at it. Looks um, like it's uh, covered a little bit on the right lower hand side of the sun there. And I just completely did not listen to my own instructions <laughs> right there. That hurt a little bit, but yes, it is covering up maybe about 10% or so of the sun currently right now. <laughs> You know, Sebastian, a big question that's been on our minds is how will the weather impact the viewing of the eclipse? And that's right. About a week ago, it was not looking great at all. In fact, it was supposed to be calling for rain and a lot of cloud coverage right now and for the next couple of hours. But as you can see, a beautiful day here in West Lafayette. Very nice temperature wise with a light breeze coming on through. Um, there was concern that the clouds and even the rain might get in the way of this. Um, thankfully, the forecast has changed in our favor. Julia Prickett sat down with WLFI chief meteorologist and guest lecturer Chad Evans to discuss the impact of the weather and the solar eclipse. The thing about that day is that it's going to be warm. Temperatures running in the 60s to about 70 degrees. If we get enough dry air from Missouri and Kansas getting in here, it'll break those clouds up a lot more. That's the question right now. Um, now, regardless, it looks like it would be partly cloudy anyway. But if we get a little more dry air, it means a little more sun, less dry air, a little more cloudiness. So uh, overall, the news is better for here. The rain would be Sunday night and into the morning. And then in the afternoon, we at least get some cloud breakage but our fingers are crossed that there's more dry air than anticipated and we really break the clouds up and erode them away. Excuse me, X and Instagram. Um, a lot going on, a lot of really neat videos um, of campus. I've seen a couple of people outside the Purdue Memorial Union and it looks like there's just a ton of coverage going on currently at the engineering fountain. It also looks like there are some people over there by the bell, bell tower as well, Gray's taking videos looking up at that right now. Yeah, I've seen many people putting their eclipse glasses over their camera to get a good shot of the eclipse happening in real time. So uh, let's once again uh, check back in with reporter John Waterworth, 
um, who's been speaking to some Boilermakers about their Eclipse experience so far today. What's happening over there, John? Welcome back. I actually managed to track down a few guys that I went to high school with who also experienced the last Eclipse. And what do you guys think of this one? I, I mean, I understand that it's going to be 100% totality compared to the last one we experienced. Uh, what do you expect? I mean, are you excited or? I'm pretty, I'm pretty hype. Um, I've never really been a part of uh, something so monumental. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm really excited too. I'm a huge space nerd, so I think it's going to be pretty cool. Space is pretty cool. I got you. And you said monumental. I mean, isn't it a little bit monumental to play the NCAA championship against UConn today? Mm -hmm. And I mean, if we win, that it's would be monumental. Yeah. Yeah, that would yeah. be monumental. But I wanted to ask you guys, um, do you commute? Because, I mean, it's been quite the traffic today, from what I understand. Yeah, um, I live just across the river, so it wasn't that too bad. But Yeah, I was coming about, from about 30 minutes away, and it was, there was a lot of traffic, especially going south, so, yeah. Beautiful weather, though. Oh, yeah. It's amazing. Start of spring. I wanted to ask you guys, you got your glasses? You got your, I do. You got your glasses. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Don't want you, don't want you getting any eye damage today. <laughs> Very yeah. interesting day. Yeah. Uh, what are your guys' families up to for the event? I know we're all local, so. Yeah. Uh, I think my folks are just working, honestly. Really? Yeah. Yeah. All my family's at home. My dad is firmly planted on the couch watching the game, so he'll be yeah. glued to the TV. Yeah. Yeah. And you say working. Did you guys have any uh, classes today? Did, it, did your classes get canceled or yeah so you guys got chill professors oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah sadly I didn't get my classes canceled today but that's okay I forgive you Liz <laughs> <laughs> last question okay. how are you guys handling the weather like a champ like a like, champ like, a champ. I, I like the like the na like Purdue about to be national champs okay yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, I shouldn't have wore jeans today. That's pretty much all I got to say about it. So. I, I respect yeah. that. I'm, I'm sweating out here. I appreciate you guys. Back to you. So currently we have a live shot from NASA. We're in Mexico right now. We do see, or if we're not seeing it yet, very, very soon, full totality in Mexico. So if we can go ahead and get that shot up, that would be fantastic. So we will not get totality here in the West Lafayette and Lafayette area, but Indianapolis, is predicted to have complete totality around a, about 3, um, 315-ish. And then again, once again, the um, place in Indiana where we will be seeing the most totality is Vincennes, Indiana, and that's going to be lasting for just about four minutes and five seconds. So the time is here. We are here currently. The moon has covered just a little bit of the sun, like we said, in the right corner, maybe potentially about, what are we at, Grace, right now? Let's see. Yeah. I'd say about 15, 20% right now. Looks a little bit like a cookie that's had a bite taken out of it Just there. like a cookie with a little bit of a bite taken out of it. So the partial eclipse has obviously begun. Um, if we can go to a live view right now, a current look of the sun and what we have. Now, once again, we do have these special filters um, on the lenses that do protect it. Um, so if it does appear to be a little bit huey, if it does appear to be a little bit off color, um, that is the reason for that. Yeah, it seems like the temperature has dropped just a little bit here. Absolutely. We were talking about that earlier. Um, so you can definitely tell that part of the sun is being blocked. The temperatures drop, we've got a little bit of a breeze, and it doesn't seem as bright outside. It's definitely brightness has gone down. It has dropped just a few degrees, but the, the breeze has definitely picked up. And it has actually quieted down here on uh, the Engineering Fountain Mall just a little bit. People obviously looking up at it, a little bit in awe, um, but it has quieted down here. So the temperature has gone down, as has the volume. And just another remi reminder to please do wear your eclipse glasses if you do plan on looking up at the sun um, very important to protect your eyes um, and just from a few seconds of viewing it can be potentially very very damaging so obviously a very cool experience we have going on here just to recap we are here at the engineer and fountain currently right now a couple hundred people going around just looking around all over the place people everywhere grace yeah definitely families our fellow boiler makers um, our classes for most of the day have been canceled here at Purdue University as many other schools are following suit so that everyone can enjoy this nice weather and this 
rare cosmic event here. I know I can speak from experience. I have a, uh, my sister had her classes canceled here, Lafayette School System. Um, really, really neat that a lot of professors have graciously canceled classes to allow us to experience this currently. Again, it is dropping in temperature pretty quickly. It definitely quickly. is. It's, it's definitely a lot chillier than it was when we started at 145 here. And it's just going to get keep getting colder and colder as we go on today. Uh, we're going to take a commercial break in just a few moments. It's been a lot of fun to start off this special live broadcast today. When we come back, we'll hand the anchor duties over to a few of our classmates who will continue our coverage leading up to totality. Or for those of you here with us in the West Lafayette, the 99.5% of totality, which is as close as we will get here at Purdue. We do have a reporter, Will Courtney, who is in the path of totality. Um, we are hoping to take him live in the next hour. Please stay with us. Uh, more live coverage of the great American solar eclipse is next. Spain. Good day, mates. Buenos dias. Bonjour. Hello from South Korea. I'm studying abroad in Valencia, Spain this semester. I'm studying abroad in Sydney, Australia. I'm studying abroad in Madrid, Spain. I'm studying at Seoul National University. At Isai Supero in Toulouse, France. And I'm really getting to enjoy meeting all the new people and the culture. How different it is from Purdue University. It is an absolutely fantastic experience. I'm living my best life. I can't wait to see you guys all overseas soon. A bientôt. Adios. Nos vemos de España. I'm Rachel. I'm 19 years old. I'm a sophomore in computer engineering here at Purdue. And I'm the president of DAO. So DAO stands for Dance All Out. And it's kind of like a community where all dancers of different skill levels and artists have a space to express themselves and be artists and perform. We perform at things like the AAA Night Market uh, and the VA, the Very Asian Showcase at the end of the semester. Uh, we even had our own showcase last year and that was really exciting. DAO not only offers like weekly classes and performance opportunities, but um, kind of like a really strong community slash family to do it with. When people talk about college or mm -hmm. when you see in like coming of age movies, it's all about like the main character finding like the place where they belong, whether it's in school or like extracurricular or like with their friends or another hobby. Um, but like this could be the place where you find like your coming of age moment and like it could be the place where you discover like um, a big part of your life. News. Speaking in front of students, I believe this is a great opportunity if you want to take a first step into the sports field. At Purdue, there's Big Ten Plus, but also Lafayette Aviator is, is, is the other biggest broadcast stream in the area. It's a perfect choice for someone, you know, if you have, have not have a plan yet in the summer, well, stay on campus, take the class, join the broadcast team at Aviators. I mean, really, it's it's summertime. It, it's summertime, it's baseball season. There are just so much fun you can do over there. Well, baseball in general is a uh, just a fun group of guys that we're looking to uh, play baseball uh, at the next level. And it's a fun way to 
have some people come together and play a game you like. The guys that are um, a nice fit to, uh, to the team as well, as well as good at baseball. Um, so that's really a big piece of the puzzle to uh, joining the team. And you can get a lot of information just reaching out. We are energetic, we are motivating, and we are unique. I don't think you can beat Quidditch. of the Great American Solar Eclipse brought to you by the Brian Lamb School of Communication right here in West Lafayette. I'm Ellie Acra. And I'm Sam Cartwright. Thank you for joining us uh, and watching this broadcast today. It is currently, uh, let me check the time, 2.17 p.m. and the eclipse is in current partial totality. Uh, we will get to full totality later today at 3.07 p.m. Uh, but we are coming to you from the campus of Purdue University, standing in front of the engineering fountain, where students are gathering to catch a glimpse of this remarkable event. Yeah, over the next 30 minutes, Sam and I will be facilitating your eclipse viewing experience, or if you're not near the solar eclipse, we'll tell you what it's like here in West Lafayette and here in Indiana. We'll explore eye safety as we get closer to totality and a reminder to wear those eyeglasses if you are going to look at the sun and you are near the path of totality. We're going to talk with students anxiously away the view and discuss classes being canceled on Purdue's campus. Yes, and we'll also look uh, or discuss what it looks like from Indiana Motor Speedway. We'll share what viewers like you are saying on social media and finally teasing the effects that the darkness will have on insects and animals in your local area. Um, it's crazy how quickly the eclipse has been moving. Ellie. It really has. Yeah, we can check it out here with our glasses that it's looking like a good portion almost halfway and you know as we were talking and preparing for our segment i was thinking about when i was in probably third grade science class i don't know if you're familiar with this but the teacher would use oreos right. to show the different phases of the moon i think it could be used for the solar eclipse so if we were to use the oreos i'd say we're nearing halfway um it's a good way to teach your kids and enjoy a snack while you're watching the solar eclipse. So. Definitely, and this crowd continues to grow around us. People have been in line earlier for solar eclipse glasses, making sure that they're protecting their eyes. People have pulled up lawn chairs, students and adults alike. Um, everyone coming together to see a glimpse of this incredible event. Yeah, and it looks like we have people from Purdue, people not from Purdue, maybe Lafayette residents, people coming from other states. We're not sure. Hopefully we'll learn a little bit more when we toss to our reporter in just a little bit. But even some some students with their laptops out here so while classes may have gotten canceled there may still be some homework going on and there we go the bell tower ringing for signals of the start and end of class but it looks like by the amount of students out here most students are not worried about attending class today and you know we've got that special event tonight the Purdue Boilermakers absolutely playing in the national championship and so the energy is just high on campus today Students are having a great time. Our production team is doing an awesome job, and we're excited to be here. So thanks again for joining us. If we could go to a shot of the sun, we may have that coming here soon for you. So we'll toss to that live shot of the sun now. Yeah, you can catch a view of how covered that sun is right now by the moon in West Lafayette on Purdue's campus. Um, that is what we are seeing from the engineering fountain. Uh, and. As we uh, prepare for this eclipse, it's important to know that people are advised not to stare directly at the sun. You probably shouldn't do that regardless of <laughs> the eclipse or not, but especially today as the moon continues to cover it, uh, sometimes it can be tempting as it's not as uh, difficult to look directly at the sun, but please make sure you are wearing proper eye, pro eye protection at all times. And one of our fast track reporters, Samuel Ruse, has more on the eclipse and how to protect your eyes during this solar skeptical spectacle.
One week from Monday on April 8th, a total solar eclipse will go across the nation. The last time an event like this happened over the continental United States was back in 2017, where it just barely missed the state of Indiana. But this time, the solar eclipse is set to go straight through the center. In Indianapolis specifically, the eclipse is set to begin at 1.50 p.m. and will conclude at 4.23 p.m., but totality will only last about three minutes, from 3.06 p.m. to 3.09 p.m. A special event will be held by Purdue University at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, so make sure that you have your transportation in order for this once-in-a-lifetime event. But also, don't forget to bring eye protection, as it is not advised to stare directly at the sun during the eclipse. Eye protection that you can wear for the solar eclipse can look something like this. These are solar eclipse glasses. They look like sunglasses, but they are far more polarized than regular sunglasses, and it'll look something like this when you peer through them. For those staying on campus during the event, 1,000 free pairs of glasses will be handed out to attendees for a viewing party, and several classes have already started giving out glasses to students, even though Purdue will not be within the line of totality. At the center of totality, the sun will be completely covered by the moon for about four and a half minutes. So during the eclipse, be sure to wear your special eye protection boilers, because even a few seconds of looking directly at the sun without eye protection could be damaging to your eyesight. For Fast Track News, I'm Samuel Roos. Thanks, Samuel. It's crazy, Ellie, how quickly the moon is moving. I had no idea that it would be so visibly trackable just by the human eye. It is moving pretty fast, and it's been pretty cool to watch. Like our anchor said earlier, we've also noticed a little bit of change in temperature, a little bit of added wind, and it feels a little bit cooler out, which for us has been nice, and our dress clothes have a little bit of a breeze. But we are expected to see, according to some meteorologists, those temperatures drop a little bit as this eclipse occurs, and we see more darkness from the sun. Definitely. Well, while we're getting closer by the minute to the, to the uh, totality of the solar eclipse, let's check in with our field reporter, Connor Sutterly, talking to students on campus today. Connor, what's going on out there? Hello, I'm Connor Sutterly, and I'm reporting live here from the Engineering Fountain. And um, we're just going to take a, take a look around and uh, see how, uh, people's opinions on the eclipse and uh, what their plans are. So, uh, what is your name, you're in school, and your major? I am Den Otero. I am a senior at Purdue. I'm a senior in mass communication. Um, so I'm kind of familiar with all this camera stuff. Okay, cool. Uh, thank you for joining the interview. And what are your plans for the eclipse? You're going to stay out here, maybe watch it up, and uh, maybe go somewhere else. And have your classes been canceled for your afternoon for the eclipse? Actually, I'm part of this uh, entire production, so I am not canceled. I'm here, hey, but I got lucky enough that. to be on the live field side, and I. Uh, I'm able to watch it, which yeah. is very cool. I'm able to see it on camera, too. Uh, my plans, though, are just to stay here and round this crowd of people. Yeah, see, nice nice little inside inside look here with uh, with Denton here. And uh, did you see the 2017 eclipse? And just, like, uh, yeah, give us a little bit of information, like, what was that was like? Because I didn't get to see it personally, so I'm really interested. I'm a, I was a sophomore in high school. I remember we went out to the track, and we, uh, we looked up. We had the same kind of glasses. I got to miss a bunch of class for high school. Which hey, was nice, that's always a bonus. Exactly, exactly. Uh, but it was really nice the first time, and I mean, it's if it's going to be totality here, I'm excited for that. Yeah, we should be approaching about 99% totality out here, which will be really interesting experience for everyone out here. And um, speaking of totality, as we approach that 99%, uh, what are you most excited to see out of the eclipse? I think I'm most excited for to see how dark it is and to see, you know, actually how much it affects <laughs> everything. I'm um, excited to see how quiet it gets because I've heard it gets pretty quiet. Oh, so yeah, that. it should. I mean, this is a very rare astronomical event oh, to get yeah, to oh, see, yeah. so everyone's just going to be quiet just to see what happens. Exactly. Oh, yeah. yeah. And um, the most the most important question of all, what are your opinion on the glasses? Is, is it a good style? Um, is it something you wear maybe if it wasn't just for the protective, protective gear? So rate it on a scale about 1 to 10. You see, you these ones, ones right I got my own. Hey. I don't know what they're from, but they're pretty neat. I, I mean, show that to the, to the cameras. They've got, they've yeah. got yeah. Like the sun and moon on it, it's pretty neat. Um, but the other hey. ones, I mean, I yeah, guess they're more stylish compared to these ones. Yeah, I got a cool, like, rainbow yeah, here. Yeah. Okay, so so just, what's the rating, 1 to 10? Uh, 6.5. 6.5? 5. Those are maybe a 6.7. Hey, so, hey, so we got some pretty stylish glasses out here, and that that is a thank you for joining us. Thank oh, yeah, you. of course. Thank you. Okay, uh, back to Sam and Ellie at the desk.
Thanks, Connor. We just received word that Arkansas and Texas are now in complete totality, and we continue moving along here at Purdue, looking like we're getting a little bit over halfway, and our Oreo is melting, but we're getting there. <laughs> yep, it's still quite hot out here today. I was surprised at how uh, much different it was from yesterday. In Indiana. Oh, yeah. We got lucky with the good weather, though. For sure, yeah. Well, let's switch gears a little bit here and talk about how all these students can be here on a school day. Uh, the Office of the Provost actually asked all Purdue instructors on West Lafayette campus to be flexible and consider adjusting course schedules so that students can experience this incredible learning opportunity. Uh, this is according to a, a Purdue press release released on February 8, 2024. Uh, Ellie, what do you think? Should Purdue ha just have shut down today and canceled all classes? Well, to me, when we're also playing in the national championship, I think we totally should have just shut down today. But overall, it kind of seems like that's the way it's going. Funny story with us planning for this class. I told my instructor I'm going to have to leave early. I have a class at 3 p.m. It hasn't been canceled. The professor hasn't said anything about it. Well, this weekend, it strikes me that I'm thinking of my Tuesday class schedule and not my Monday class schedule. So really, all of my classes were indeed canceled for today. Um, so, you know, in my opinion, I think most, I think I heard most students did have canceled class. And hopefully you let your, your students enjoy this day, enjoy this trip to the national championship and the solar eclipse. Absolutely. It's such a big day here at, at West Lafayette campus. Um, it's amazing uh, how many, many teachers waited so long to announce that they were shutting down. People were really concerned that they were going to have to miss this opportunity. And also with the game tonight, I know I have friends uh, who have rehearsals tonight and uh, they were worried about getting back in time with all that traffic. Yeah. Um, because as our instructor for this broadcasting course said, uh, people are all going going to the place at different times and all leaving at the same time. So there's going to yeah. be a lot of traffic that causes people to have trouble to get back. Hopefully people can make it back for that amazing UConn Purdue game tonight. Yeah, and we encourage you, if you are here in West Lafayette or anywhere that is near or in the path of totality, please use caution when traveling after the eclipse. It may be better to wait out where you're at or even get on the road a little bit early just to be sure that you aren't stuck in that traffic, especially if you're trying to get somewhere to watch tonight's game. Luckily, you have until 920. So hopefully that's enough time to travel back to your destination and get settled in and locked in for that Purdue game. Um, so yeah, that, that email came out on March 18th, um, instructing hopefully for instructors to adjust or change those classes um, or labs that are planned from 12.30 to 5.30 p.m. So do we feel like this put the pressure on professors to follow through? I know my classes overall canceled. What about yours, Sam? Yeah, so I noticed that press release when I was doing the research came out on February 8th, and then the students got the email on March 18th that said, hey, uh, the professors have been encouraged to cancel. And I know that was when a lot of instructors started to actually cancel. So I feel like that did put the pressure on a lot of professors to be like, okay, um, now students are talking about it in my classes. Is there going to be class? Is there not? Uh, and a lot of people waited till that last last week uh, on Friday to say, okay, no, we can cover the, the lecture material that we had for today to be able to cancel class. I know that was what happened for uh, my Spanish class. Yeah, and you know, I think it would be awesome if professors decided to cancel class tomorrow morning, especially if there's a Purdue win tonight. You know, something we talked about earlier, there's just something about Purdue and the moon. You know, and if the sun, the moon, and the stars are aligning, hopefully it's aligning for Purdue basketball tonight, too. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, what did the process of your classes getting canceled or move look like? Well, really, I have one class today, and it's this okay. class. So, so you're technically not class. canceled. I'm still at this class, but it's a really enjoyable way to spend today. We're having a blast out here. Again, there is more of a crowd gathering as time continues to go on. A lot of people around, students, adults, families alike, uh, all here to experience this eclipse and we're sure across campus there is probably a lot more crowds gathered. It looks like the engineering fountain is the main area where Purdue students could come and get their glasses. I know this morning at least my friends were all texting, where can I get glasses? Anyone know? Oh, Earhart's out. Let me try Hub D. So there are a lot of places to get glasses, kind of hard to find, but hopefully everyone has those glasses and reminder to make sure you wear these whenever you look at the sun. Now let's check it out right now, see uh, how it is looking. It is I mean, that's pretty much halfway That's right pretty there. much halfway. We are nearly halfway there. And, you know, the exciting events, actually, of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway every spring, you know, those start in May. They're starting a little early this year with a partnership with Purdue University and NASA at the Speedway. There are a ton of Purdue faculty, staff, and students down at the Speedway all partnered for this awesome event at the Eclipse. So 
um, chosen because of its ideal viewing location in the path of totality, Speedway, Indiana. A lot of effort and time and planning I know for Purdue went on there and it is one of three primary partner locations in the U.S. for NASA where NASA will stave, stage a live broadcast and so if we want to take it now to NASA's live broadcast and see what NASA has to share with us. Now, Purdue has exclusive rights as the only higher education partner for this solar eclipse viewing event. So just another situation of very good press for Purdue lately. Um, last week, they had the announcement of a nearly three, $4 billion chip factory yeah. here in Lafayette. And this week, you've got the solar eclipse partnered with NASA, the exclusive higher education partner in that and you've got the national championship tonight. Right, right now at IMS there's a lot of programs and festivities, track tours, IndyCar demo laps, autograph sessions, a STEM symposium with two different tracks for programming, and uh, one more technical and one focused on the youth and families around the area. So uh, featuring expert, experts from NASA, Purdue, and IndyCar. Purdue experts, alumni, and students are also there um, experiencing that at IMS. James Webb Telescope, Neil Armstrong Legacy, Artemis Mission, um, all these things are things that they're discussing at IMS. Yeah, and they did already have that astronaut panel from Purdue's Cradle of Astronauts. There were tons of NASA faculty and folks there as well as Purdue astronauts. And we can even see, if you look at Life at Purdue on social media, you can see some of the events going on down there at the track. And one of them in particular that we found funny was the Purdue president, Meng Chang, practicing with his eclipse glasses and he said does the sun look black and gold to you i think uh ellie looking up at the sun right now it does look quite black and gold to me and i think that's a positive sign for our game tonight oh yeah i think i truly think the stars the sun and the moon are aligning for that and so the eclipse timeline there in indianapolis is very similar to ours here in west lafayette the difference is by mere seconds and so the partial eclipse began around 1 50 1 51 p.m today and the total eclipse is estimated around 306 uh, p.m. 307 for sure. Uh, Speedway will uh, experience that totality at 307 and uh, the whole eclipse event will end at 422 p.m. today. Yeah, and so there's just a little bit of the look at IMS, what's going on there, all the activities planned. I've heard of some Purdue friends, they traveled with their family to IMS and are hoping to make it back up here. So like we said again with the traffic earlier, be mindful and careful and we really hope you can make it back for that game. Um, at, and as far as social media too, we've got, if you check out the hashtag Solar Eclipse 2024, a lot of interesting stuff to find there. Um, and just looking at Life at Purdue Instagram and Twitter, you will find a lot of things from what's going on at IMS. If you're looking for more West Lafayette centered coverage too, check out Purdue Fast Track News on Instagram for more information and for more shots from campus. So it's shaping up to be an exciting day, exciting time, and a lot going on here. Yeah, now Ellie, the solar eclipse not only affects us as humans, but there's also research to show that uh, the eclipse affects animals and insects in the area when it gets so dark. According yeah, you, you may have seen, yeah, you may have seen where different sites and different groups and researchers are telling you to make sure your dogs are inside or your animals are inside during the eclipse. That's to protect their eyes. So if you are at home with your pup or with your animal, go ahead and put them inside, even maybe close the blinds so that there's no risk of animals um, facing the consequences of looking at the sun, just like we're trying to avoid looking at the sun by wearing our glasses. Absolutely. Wearing uh, these glasses uh, protects our retinas and uh, dogs and other uh, domesticated animals also have retinas that can burn by looking at the sun. So uh, just keep them safe by keeping and them inside. And it may today. be hard to put glasses on a dog. So Absolutely. probably best to keep them inside. I think it'd be pretty funny to see that though. It would be funny. And according to the National Institute of Health, this is where we're getting a bulk of this information about animals and insects, 75% of animals will exhibit a behavioral response to the eclipse. Now this is done on research based on an eclipse that happened in 2017. And it showed that most animals started exhibiting their evening or nighttime behaviors, usually connected with dusk as the eclipse reached totality. And it's just this conflict with their internal rhythms and external environment. So we think of that circadian rhythm that even us as humans have with sleep, animals experiencing that, this can really kind of throw their bodies out of whack, which is pretty interesting. Just like the Purdue game tonight being so late is gonna throw off my circadian rhythm. Exactly. Well, hopefully celebrations after too. Right. <laughs> Uh, animals also exhibit anxiety when they are experiencing this eclipse because it throws off that rhythm. Uh, it mimics it. Er, yeah. 
Sorry. It mimics like short, fast moving storms. Right. So if there's a storm going on, this would show ways that they would maybe act. And it kind of makes sense. We have a little bit of wind. I don't know if that's totally from the effects of the eclipse, but you know, that kind of quick change in temperature that can, the temperature can drop a little bit. As I said, we're continuing to feel slight drops in temperature as the eclipse continues. Definitely. It kind of mimics when a storm is coming in. So I could see that. There's also been some weird things that animals have done during previous eclipses. The AP reported that at a zoo in South Carolina, animals were doing nothing during the day and then suddenly started breeding during the peak of the eclipse. Gibbons started singing unusual tunes and giraffes began to gallop in apparent anxiety. So just a lot of weird things that can go on with an eclipse when it comes to animals. Absolutely. Researchers are studying animals during this eclipse and hoping to learn more at the Fort Worth Zoo in Texas. Uh, the researchers said even watching your dogs or the animals in your backyard during the eclipse could be interesting. Yeah, so even if, if you have that dog at home, they may be acting kind of funny during the eclipse, so it could be interesting to pay attention there or even a cat. Uh, yeah, and like we said, Texas has experienced complete totality, so it will be interesting to see that research that comes out of the Fort Worth Zoo following this event. And if you are uh, leaving your dogs in your backyard, please remember that they do have the risk of uh, hurting their eyes, so make sure you keep them inside if you don't want to risk that. And Sam, we are currently sitting at 2.37 p.m. Checking the sun, we are getting dang near totality here. Probably over three quarters of the way there. Yeah, if you can see. If you're tracking on your Oreo, <laughs> the melted Oreo, we are getting close to totality here. Well, we're not going to reach complete totality, but 99% totality here on Purdue's campus. So it's getting there, guys. Yeah, Ellie, well, we're coming to the end of our segment here. Thank you for uh, joining me for the last half hour, and thank you for joining us as well. Um, and thank you for tuning into this broadcast uh, at all. Don't go away because we'll be right back after yeah. this quick commercial break. And with... we're going to take a quick live shot of the sun, I think, before we jump to that oh, commercial yeah, break, too. It. Yeah, as you can see, that sun is... Uh, is over halfway now. We are approaching that uh, point of totality here on Purdue's campus. Yeah, and luckily in our next block, we have our weather specialist, Julia and Veda, coming. They focus on meteorology in our show Fast Track. They did last semester, and so they've been preparing a lot for this eclipse and can give you more insight on the weather and all of those things. Um, but luckily, like we said, we've had pretty good weather today. It's looking nice out here. It is getting busier out here on Memorial Mall as we get closer and closer to the eclipse. I see some uh, people putting their eclipse glasses over their cell phones so that they can get a good shot of that sun um, without burning their camera lens, I guess. Uh, there's a lot of people. <laughs> standing, talking around, uh, discussing this event that's going to happen, and uh, we have Veda and Julia coming up to take you through that most anticipated time of the day. And yeah, like we said, a lot of Purdue gear too. There's some solar eclipse t-shirts, there's a lot of Purdue t-shirts, a lot of Purdue jerseys, and so like we said, an exciting day here on campus. A lot of fun for Purdue students, for Purdue fans, especially those close to this path of totality. And like we said, if you want to keep updated on what's going on at IMS, actually, my glasses today are the IMS greatest spectacle glasses, the greatest spectacles, as they call them. And so <laughs> be sure to check out Purdue social media for more of what's going on at the Motor Speedway. Again, they've had panels, discussions. THR was there as part of the show today and Good Morning America was also at the Motor Speedway this morning, which is mm. pretty crazy. Like we said, a lot of cool things happening for Purdue today, a lot of exciting events going on, and we are very excited to continue taking you through this day, through this coverage. Like we said, we've got Julia and Veda coming up here after this quick commercial break. We're coming to you from Carmel, Indiana right now, where we are currently in the path of totality. Now, a ton of cities in central Indiana region will be in the path of totality, meaning the moon will exactly cross over the sun in a certain specific way for about three minutes where the actual eclipse totality will take place. Now, unfortunately, Lafayette is not a part of the path of totality, and it's really encouraged that you use these. These are our eclipse glasses. It's a little tricky how you use them and depending on where you use them as well. Now, if you're in the path of totality, if you're at the Indiana 
Indiana, Indianapolis Motor Speedway for the Purdue event, or if you're in Carmel, Indiana like me, it's actually encouraged that you take these off during the eclipse, but that's only when the actual eclipse is happening. Where when the moon crosses over and the actual total eclipse is happening, you can look at it with the naked eye for about two to four minutes is what experts are saying. However, as soon as that ends, please put them back on. It can prevent a lot of eye damage. If you're in Lafayette, if you're enjoying the eclipse at Purdue University, please make sure these are on 24-7. Lafayette is unfortunately not in the path of totality. Reporting to you from Carmel, Indiana, my name is Will Courtney, Fast Track News. Being involved in the three-year program at Purdue made it easier to say to myself I could get done in three years. The three-year program helped save me a ton of money. And not completing my fourth year, I would save around $30,000. It will give you an advantage, if anything. Doing the three-year program at Purdue has shown me that I have motivation to do whatever it takes to get my degree. Hi there, my name is Vikram Jaithluk, and I'm the founder and president of the Purdue chapter of the University Blood Initiative. Over the past two years, we've been able to collect over 300 pints of blood to be donated to local hospitals, and you can be the next one to help out. I donate my blood at the University Blood Initiative. Hi, I just donated blood through the University Blood Initiative. Hi, I just donated blood through the University Blood Initiative at Purdue. Hi, I donated my blood through the University Blood Initiative at Purdue. And I donated my blood at University Blood Initiative at Purdue. Are you looking for a new hobby? Or do you want to have a fun evening with your friends? Then you come climb to new heights at the Co-Rec Climbing Wall. Football. It's the best time of the year. You know what else is great? The world's largest and fastest mascot. You can't have Purdue football without the trains. Look for the Reamer Club outside Stewart Center, 12 to 5 p.m. on Fridays before home football games for your chance to ride the Boilermaker Special for free. See you then. Watching Fast Track News. I mean, every year is different, but it hasn't changed that much. Our league is just ominous, and you better lace them up tight and be ready to play every night. If not, you're going to get beat.
Welcome back to our live production of the Great Am here to you today live in the middle of Purdue University and it's currently around 2 46 p.m. here and the eclipse is about 75 to 80 percent of totality. I know, let's so. take a live look. Let's go ahead Do and a just quick see. check in here. It looks like a toenail. So oh, we're yeah. getting to a good spot. Yeah. So I'd say what about 75 80 percent? Yeah. Beautiful absolutely. little crescent going on right now. And like Veda mentioned we are coming to you live here in the heart of Purdue University right here in front of the engineering fountain and as you can see there's a lot going on today on absolutely. top of a national championship tonight. You know, we have a lot of students really gathering around mm -hmm. to see this once in a lifetime opportunity and event. So yeah. again, a lot of students behind us, in front of us, just seriously everywhere. Mm -hmm. And the conditions, the weather conditions are looking really good right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. We got a lucky day here in West Lafayette. We have people decked out in their Purdue gear here to see the eclipse and the game and beautiful pairing with that 72 degree temperatures. And I will say, Veda and I here, maybe kind of experts, not so much. Experts is a term. <laughs> uh, I prefer maybe just our majors give yeah. us a little bit of a heads up with what's going on with the weather here. So I'm an atmospheric science major. And I'm a minor in atmospheric science. So we can tell you a little bit about the weather conditions. Absolutely. But I'd say about a week ago, meteorologists were really thinking that there was going to be a significant amount of cloud coverage for today. Right. But as you can see, the sun is shining. Got lucky. We did. And we have some upper level clouds, but for the most part, it won't impact seeing the no eclipse today. At all. It's currently, I would say about 70 degrees out, but I think once we hit totality. We are going to notice a bit of a temperature decline. So we started off today around 76 degrees and with that sun just pounded down, it was really heating everything up. But with the moon kind of covering us now, we have those upper level clouds, a little bit translucent, not really causing too much of an impact, but we have seen temperatures drop down about eight degrees so far. I was going to say probably about eight to nine degrees right. and we can seriously feel it starts to get chilly because we have that breeze moving in. But as you can see, everybody's just really enjoying the nice weather because we had some rain chances yesterday that worked their way in. We're like a pin in the needle, like you can just see that sunshine really coming out. Right. But then some more rain chances will move in come later tonight and into tomorrow. So it's a lucky day here Absolutely. on Purdue's campus. Some might say the stars are aligning for us here at Purdue. Yeah, let's go ahead and take a live look at the sun from our live view sitting outside right here at the engineering fountain. And as you can see, we're going to put our glasses on one more time. I'd say Handy good, dandy glasses here. I would say a good, ooh, we're probably yeah. a good 80 percent right now. We Maybe are moving. 85? It is moving along. It is. It's happened so fast absolutely. today. Absolutely. We were shocked by the speed of it. We got here, the first thing we see, a little bite out of the cookie of the sun, we <laughs> said. It looks just like a cookie or like the insom insomnia. insomnia. Yeah, insomnia. Yeah, insomnia. We might have to go visit there later after a Purdue win. Absolutely. Celebration. So yeah, hopes are really high on Purdue's campus. Spirits are high. Students are really, really in a good mood today. Absolutely. And I think we have the nice weather to thank for that as well. So if you're just tuning in with us now, we do want to catch you up a little bit on what has happened so far today. Well, Veda, so far today, most of central Indiana cities began to see the partial eclipse right around 1.51 p.m. and is now currently 2.49, almost 2.50. We're a good 15 minutes out yes. from 99.5% totality here close. in West mm -hmm. Lafayette. Now, the eclipse, the 100% totality mark is really in central Indiana. I'm from Shelbyville, Indiana, so I know personally my hometown is 100% totality. A lot of people traveling in to see this happen. What about you, Veda. So I'm actually from Buffalo, New York, and coincidentally enough, we both are living in hometowns of 100% totality. So I made sure my parents knew what was going on. They secured their glasses, and they're up in Buffalo. Going to watch it a couple hours after we, after we do. Yeah, I hear some hollering. We started to see that shift. It got just a, got little, a little bit darker. darker. This is mm -hmm. getting really exciting. We're, we are going to stay live with you guys as this happens. Veda and I here today. Absolutely. But the eclipse started in the United States in Caraville, Texas. It started about 1.50 today. It's really the start to make it way through and in 15 states we'll see a hundred percent totality definitely the great american eclipse you can say that for <laughs> sure but here in indiana there are 16 totality locations so i know julia is really involved with some stuff with the indiana motor speedway and I there's am. a pretty big event going on there today want to talk about is. that is purdue is actually partnering with nasa to have a live broadcast from indianapolis at the indianapolis motor speedway there today and we had a few people there live for us today will courtney was out there at the 100 percent totality path and it was just great to see that Purdue can come together to form science Absolutely. and NASA. It's just a great opportunity all around for the campus and the university.
first speed. Absolutely. And then on top of it, we have a nice game to look forward to this evening. I, I won't stop talking about it. I can't. <laughs> this is so exciting. It keeps coming up. Everywhere I look around, we have Purdue gear. Everybody's decked out. And, you know, the tensions are really high with that excitement for the game. But I'm happy to see that people are taking a pit stop here before they maybe make it out to the bars later. To watch right. The and, Vader, do you think it's a coincidence that we have the Great American Solar Eclipse um, happening right here in the state of Indiana and Purdue is it a is national championship for the first time in a long time. It's the question of the day, and I do have to say, I don't think UConn has had the privilege that we've had today. So, like I said, stars could be aligning. There's a lot of coincidences going on. I, myself, am a little bit superstitious. Me too. The sun and the moon are aligning, so hopefully moon. the stars align for a national championship tonight. Yes, and I do have to say, with Purdue's history in space and the space scene, like, what are the odds that such a space-heavy school is having this astronomical coincidence on the day of a huge game? And I think I read something that Neil Armstrong took his first steps, something like that, you know, on this day. I might have seen that somewhere on the somewhere, news. Not but, really sure. A couple years ago. No right. big deal, though. I doubt it. Yeah. But, so the good news is, at approximately 3.06, we're coming along. It's 2.51 currently right now. I'd say, let's take another look, right? Why not? It's been a couple minutes. It's moving pretty quick. I'd say we're good. Huh, 85, 90% yep, beta. Yep. It's, start, it's really starting to look like a tone up. We could get another live look at that. That's the best way to describe it. Yep. It really does look like it has that crescent perfect Absolutely. shape. Love it. So another live look at that, as you can see. But again, we'll continue to bring you live coverage right here outside the engineering fountain for the great American solar eclipse for today. And what an opportunity to be seniors, to be a part of it. Absolutely. Here, Us being Purdue. our senior year, there is no better way to not only celebrate such a huge event, but also to pair it with that national championship game so I'm sitting here thinking I was like maybe this is our good karma from COVID taking away our high school senior year right absolutely and then so. speaking of that being back in high school it was 2017 the last time we were mm -hmm. in an eclipse I believe I was a freshman in high school what about I was, you Vita? I think a sophomore I was sophomore, sophomore then, no yeah. and I, I just vividly remember it was during class time we went outside yep. put on the glasses but it was not nearly as special as today's especially with the just the overall mood on campus today we have basically every single walks of life out here collecting on the engineering fountain so Right in the heart of campus, it's a huge, what was the word, was monument in the middle of monument. campus here. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Spirits are high and things are looking good for the Boilermakers. But again, we're 99.5% totality here in West Lafayette. A lot of central Indiana getting 100% totality. But the longest point of totality duration is going to last about 4 minutes and 5 seconds in Vincent's, Indiana. Not too far. No, not too far. Just a little bit south of here. And I do want to add that we got lucky here on Purdue's campus because we did have a lot of cooperation with the administration. And so our teachers were notified that they are highly recommended um, in loose terms to allow students to be able to leave class, basically cancel classes for the day, allowing everyone to get outside and view this amazing event. But yeah. So it was initially a memo that was released, and we didn't hear a lot of stir about it from the professors on campus until there was more of a push. Was it March 18th? They yeah. released the final statement about March it. March 18th, the email came from Purdue and two students stating that, I quote, all instructors are encouraged to consider adjusting schedules so that no mandatory classes, exams, or lab sessions are planned from 12.30 to 5.30 p.m. Absolutely everyone out here. Yeah, it's amazing and, to see. And again, if you're just tuning in with us, we are here with a live coverage by the Brian Lamb School of Communication for the Great American Solar Eclipse here in West Lafayette. We will get to about 99.5% totality today. So, so it is really excited. We're not to 100, but we can't complain. This is awesome. Absolutely not. We're definitely going to see a huge difference in the, of course, the light that we're going to receive here. It has been slowly dimming as we've been going out through our broadcast here. I don't know if you can notice it's getting a little bit darker. Luckily, we have a camera crew out back working do diligently to make sure that you can keep seeing us. But I do have to mention that it's going to get a little bit dark. So if you start to notice a bit of difference in the camera quality, that is going to be why. But we're doing yeah. the best we can with that. Absolutely. And I think with that, too, with the big moment coming up, you may hear some silence because I know right. we'll want to take it in. Everyone around us will really want to take it in. So right. we'll keep you up to date. But just to make sure aware of that, that you may hear some silence from us. I mean, this I is a really a great opportunity See, again. You bring up an interesting point with that because I've seen a couple of people, like videos online of people posting past eclipses, and some of them are absolute pin drop silence. And then you get the crowds that are screaming and raging once you get that full moment of totality. So it will be interesting to see what we have from our Purdue right. crowd here I today. know Central Indiana has to be going crazy, especially oh, in Indianapolis at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway like we absolutely. just talked about with mm -hmm. Purdue partnering with NASA. But again, if you're just tuning in with us, we are here in West Lafayette. And I mean, it's a great day. 99.5% totality will hit us today. And weather conditions. I mean, Veda and I here, you know, we have a little bit of atmospheric science background. Right. So it's looking to be, I'd say it's about 73 degrees 73 right, now. right now. Definitely feeling a little bit cooler, though, as we have that 
that solar insulation decreasing as the moon is beginning to cover our sun. So it is going to impact the temperature that we feel down here as it's basically like a massive cloud that's beginning to move in. So. And I have to mention, just a couple of weeks ago, a lot of different meteorologists were thinking we'd have a significant amount of cloud coverage, but today that's not the case. Completely cleared up. I can't believe how lucky we got. I right? was preparing for the worst. We had our umbrellas out and everything, but especially with yesterday's weather, we had some nasty conditions. Right, and tomorrow. So we're like right in between two different weather systems. Perfect Moving little hole that we got. We are weather. to have a great opportunity to have some great weather today and the rest of the week. Mm -hmm. We'll dip down in some cooler temperatures with some rain chances moving in, but I know right. a lot of people on campus obviously are, are really taking advantage Absolutely. of the great weather today. So Reaping those really benefits thankful. with the sun out. I mean, we really haven't even had temperatures in West, of that West Lafayette reaching up to the 70s, really. I don't think this season so far. Not at all. And it really feels like spring on campus. I mean, even the trees and the flowers are really starting to bloom. It's beautiful. So it is. It's a great day to be on campus and it's a great day to be a Boilermaker. Absolutely. Especially later tonight. I mean, this is going to be a late night for a lot of us because we have a national championship game tonight. So say I'm moving out of here pretty quickly. After <laughs> this up. I'm going to no. see the sun and then we're late. Yeah, Just no, it's going to be great. So it's a great day to be a Boilermaker and especially, you know, with NASA and Purdue coming together to be at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway for today. There's a lot of great things going on today to be a Boilermaker. The coolest intersection really of science and what you're getting with sports on the other side. It's like we have diehard sports fans and also these astronomical connoisseurs, you can say, that are here right. for both events. And so yeah. it's great that we can appeal to everybody on campus today. And I will say it's great to see so many students outside. And I'm just glad to see, you know, even though Purdue did cancel the classes, mm -hmm. there's students really taking the opportunity to really see this solar eclipse outside right. here at the Engineering Fountain. But not only here, I'm sure campus is crazy busy. I can only imagine. I would hope everybody's like, outside. Right. Not only do we have this beautiful weather, but this amazing event. Speaking of that, should we take a check up on the sun? Here? Yeah, let's we go got? ahead and take another live view of the Shot of Make that sure sun. you're using your glasses, unlike me, who just looked up at the sun. It's a little tempting sometimes. Yeah, so and then another look. I oh mean, my like gosh. 90% there. So. Absolutely. But we will be right back with the more live coverage here of the Great American Solar Eclipse brought to you by the Brian Lamb School of Communication. Olympics and Paralympics are unified as one, and where all athletes at all levels have equal opportunities to play and perform at their full potential. Athletics has been such an influential and transformative aspect of my life. So to me, RISE is about ensuring that every person that has the desire to participate in sport has the opportunity to do so. This organization is about recognition. We believe in recognizing excellence where it is found, especially in Paralympic sports. RISE is about driving change in our community and beyond. We hope that through our events and initiatives, we can galvanize people for our cause and inspire them to create an ever-growing network to help achieve our mission. It's about connecting people of various backgrounds and who truly care about creating meaningful change together. We develop projects and hold events to bring people together at the interface of inclusivity, sports, and engineering. Our goal is to promote the equality of all sports and to improve sports performance and accessibility. Join us so that you can have a major contribution in creating meaningful change. I mean, every year is different, but it hasn't changed that much. Our league is just ominous, and you better lace them up tight and be ready to play every night. If not, you're going to get beat.
Well, we're taking another live look. We are right here live on Purdue's campus for the Great American Solar Eclipse Show. I'm Julia Prickett. Solar Eclipse And I'm Beta Kirsch. And we have a great Purdue fan here that's also probably celebrating the game in addition to the eclipse. Absolutely. There's a lot of students out here today. Purdue canceled classes. It's really giving the opportunity for students to come out here. And we are just six minutes away from 99.5% totality here in West Lafayette, Indiana. Right. And when we just took a look at the sun there, it's interesting. We do notice that sliver is starting to become a little bit more yellow. Absolutely. It's almost casting this strange filter on the engineering fountain out here. And it's looking a little bit dimmer in addition to the color. It do seem to be changing yeah. a little bit. I will say we're about 90% totality, maybe even 92 at this point. It's definitely getting I mean, that. with our atmospheric science backgrounds, Veda, we can talk a little bit about that. But weather conditions are really favorable here on Absolutely. campus. Absolutely. Not barely a cloud in the sky. And when you do see one, it's really high in altitude, which is causing it to become very translucent. So even if we did have some slight cloud cover, we'd be able to see right through it to be able to see that solar eclipse going right. on. Right. We have some upper level clouds in the atmosphere right now, but they're translucent. So you can see right through right. it. It's really going to make a nice day to see Absolutely. the solar eclipse. It's and really exciting. For sure. And giving you some context with that, too, yesterday we had downpours and we showers all day with these super heavy winds right. and cloud cover. It was a very gray day. So not really high expectations for the weather today, but luckily... What I guess I mean, the look celestial at gods might be on our side. Right, I know. We're right in between two rain systems that will start to move in. Another rain system tomorrow, and it will continue to move in. But as you can see, we're really starting to see a lot of people start to put their glasses on. We're approximately four minutes out to 99.5% totality here in West Lafayette on Purdue's campus. Absolutely. So when this big moment happens, you may hear some silence. Don't be disturbed. We're really just all taking in the moment, but we'll continue to update you. And some other things that you might be experiencing during the eclipse, I did read somewhere that if you have any animals, any pets, dogs might be a little bit concerned or confused with what's going on and you might get a verbal reaction out of your dog, maybe a couple barks. So make sure that you, I guess, take care of them, hug them tight during this. Right, and eclipse. even the insects. Earlier today, yes. Ellie and Sam talked a little bit about the insects and how they'll react to this because, you know, it's at dusk almost with Absolutely. these insects. So mm -hmm. we may be able to hear a few things, but with how busy it is on campus, it may be a little bit tougher, but if you're out in the country or other, you know, different places, you might see some funny things going on. Absolutely, so like that's frogs especially. Yes. So. So. But this will be exciting. We're just approximately four minutes out now. It is currently 3.02. I would say if we could take another live look from our live view shot, I would say we're right about 95%. It's really starting to darken now. Oh, my we're starting gosh. starting to get at dusk. It's really awesome to see. That's and so cool. many students out here today. Really, everybody's starting to put their glasses on. And it's just a great day to be a part of this video. Absolutely. And, you know, once we get past the solar eclipse, we do have a huge event coming up, and that is the Boilermakers finals game. So yeah. the men's national basketball championship is occurring tonight so yeah. so as you can see spirits are high people are really really excited and it is such a great day to be a boilermaker i know i'm proud i'm absolutely proud and as seniors too this is their last kind of hurrah you know and this is a great day to culminate all that together and experience what's really one of the most campus uniting events i've seen up to this point so we have students from all walks of life we have the science lovers we have the sports lovers we have adults parents it's really an amazing thing. It is. And now it's currently 3.03 p.m. And as you can see, it's not even just students out here, should I mention. Maybe Lafayette residents, different Absolutely. professors, different workers here on Purdue's campus really coming together for this great American solar eclipse. And we have to say thank you to all the people behind the scenes that it is working to make this possible. Absolutely. And thank you to the Brian Lamb School of Communication for putting this wonderful live broadcast on. So it is currently... We got 3.04 p.m. now, and so we're really getting close to what was the projected time of total of solar totality, which is going to be around 3.07 p.m. is what we were told, but from what I'm seeing, it's, we're, it's accelerating very quickly. It is quickly. very quickly. So as we start to put our glasses on, I think we're going to put our glasses on and keep them on until we can see it. I know I want to take my glasses off a few different times just to see everybody's reactions, but overall... This is a really exciting day and a really great day to be a Boilermaker. And we're really not sure the reactions that we're going to be getting from these crowds. I know right now it's a little rowdy, but we could be seeing some total silence. And here we go. Here's some cheering. A few different students. This I was really immediately exciting. wrong. <laughs> All right, here we go. We're putting our glasses on. We're really going to take in this moment, and we'll continue to update you guys throughout the day. So here we go. I'd say we're at 98% totality oh now. Oh, my gosh. We're really reaching that point to 99.5%. Central Indiana hitting 100% totality here. with a duration anywhere from two to four minutes. But here in Lafayette, we'll get to see about 99.5%. So this is just a great day overall to be a boiler. It's so funny because I really thought that we were going to notice a difference with that 99.5%, but it is almost looking like we're going to have complete darkness I think we're going to have complete darkness. This is going to be really exciting. What so. an amazing place to see it right in the heart of Purdue's campus at the engineering fountain here. Yeah, we have a lot of exciting students and different people behind us really taking this in. And Purdue is alive today. Campus Absolutely. is awesome. Spirits are high and this is really exciting.
It's currently 3.05 p.m. We are just one minute out from 99.5% totality. So here's the big moment. You ready? Let's do it. All right. Glasses on. Glasses are on and we're leaving them on, folks. So if you are outside, make sure to wear that protective eye gear. Oh my gosh, As you, you can got see a here, thin line. Gloves. We have a thin line in the sun. This is awesome. Ooh, that deep yellow color. I really right. wasn't expecting that. It's such a thin line and it's really bringing that yellow filter all across campus. And the cheers are awesome. starting here. We got some We have some cheering going on. Going on. People are really excited on campus. As you can see, everybody's just looking up, really, really just taking in the moment. We have all heads facing towards the sky. <laughs> Filters applied to the world out here. And Purdue has been so generous enough to really supply a lot of different classes Absolutely. too, which has been awesome for different students. You can notice that line parents. starting to shrink here. It's here it comes, yeah. If we could take another live view, look at our nice camera we have set up outside. As you can see, that nice thin line is really delivering that yellow tint filter out here. Oh my goodness. Right outside the engineering fountain. It's starting to get a little bit smaller Oh my here. goodness, and literally every minute. Every it's minute changing every, every second. Going, every I second. Know. Absolutely not expecting it to be that deep yellow color. That's what I'm shocked about. Here we go. Here's some cheering. It is currently 3.06 p.m. and here it comes. We're at 99.5% totality now. Look at around campus. It's just really dark out here. I'm I know shocked. it is. Everything's <laughs> casting a shadow. You know, you really would never expect that for the middle of the day. It's quite a phenomenon yeah, this is to interesting. see. This is awesome. I mean, even the bell tower over here is just really looking really dark, but spirits are really high on campus. Everyone has their phones out. Everyone has their phones out ready to go. So this is awesome. Have some people in absolutely high spirits. Yeah, out a lot here. of people are really excited that. for this event. So this is awesome. It's good to see everyone getting excited for such a cool thing. So. Here's All the right. big moment, everybody's glasses are on. It is currently 307 right now. We are at 99.5% totality. This is the moment. There this is the time. Go. It's coming down to the second where really the thin line. It's really starting to shrink. And I a lot of imagine. chatter on campus. I can a only lot imagine of... Central Indiana right now going oh my crazy as they're in the 100% totality mark. But here in West Lafayette, we have it just as good. It's Look just an that. amazing sight to see. So beautiful. We're getting down to that very thin I know, sliver. Beta, this is awesome. Oh my gosh. Another live view. I mean, again, this is just great. And this is honestly a moment I have seen meteorologists post. This is a moment you can take off your glasses and look for just a split second. But this is for now and about another minute, and you have to put those glasses right back on. Right, right. You definitely want to make sure you're protecting your eyes during this. I did just like so we have a lot of exciting <laughs> people out here today, as you can see. But again, this is just a really great day to be able to Oh, absolutely. Maker. And taking a look, another look around here, we have all heads tilted upwards, everyone with their glasses on. And like Julie was saying earlier, we did have Purdue providing like over a thousand glasses to students out here and students that people alike. So yeah, we've been out here since about noon today and so many students were on campus grabbing their glasses, oh, yeah. you know, getting a seat right here. near. Hours the early fountain. too. Everyone was preparing. For Absolutely. Super cool to see. And we saw a lot of people even with their laptops out too. Classes <laughs> were canceled for Purdue, but that never stops with Purdue. Absolutely. Homework. Especially how here we are at Purdue. We are, um, very studious I was school. going to say, what's the word for it? Academically inclined. Right. So taking the students out of the classroom for even today can be a little stressful, but definitely worth it for how amazing this has been so far. What an experience. Right, and it was a great day, and I'm really happy, you know, to see that Purdue canceled the classes from anywhere from 12.30 to 5.30 today, so it gave students the opportunity to see the solar eclipse live right. out here. So it's looking like this is probably the max that we're going to get with this our This is not the max there. we're going to get, and it's continuing to move now. So for us personally, you know, we're going to recap the day overall, what we've seen so far here Absolutely. on campus. So earlier today, we talked a little bit about Purdue canceling classes, which was awesome. But now another thing, like I mentioned before, at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, Purdue University is there with a live broadcast, which has just been an awesome opportunity as the Indianapolis Motor Speedway has been one of three locations for a live broadcast. So it's great to see Purdue can partner with NASA to be Absolutely. able to do things like this. And we're in the perfect position to do so as well. We I mean, we do have a lot of space-enriched history here on campus. I mean, like we talked about earlier, we have, you know, the casual Neil Armstrong flex. Right, about absolutely. There, so. You know, very science-driven school, especially space-driven. So, you know, being in partner with NASA is just a great opportunity. But again, once the sun continues to move its way, you know, it's starting, conditions are really starting to get back to normal, as you can see. We see that heat go back up as well. That's what I was going to say. We probably dropped, I'd say, maybe 10, 15 degrees. Yes. Yep. Relatively chilly. So, but 
Now, we do have a nice live interview coming to you live with Jared, who's talking to a few students on campus about the solar eclipse. What's up, Jared? Thank you so much, Julia and Veda. I'm here with Jack and Bill, um, two people that have watched the eclipse today as it is still going on behind us. It is still very much in form right now. Um, I just have a couple questions for y'all today. So what did you think about the solar eclipse on campus today? It was really nice. Um, only 99% here, but it was still wonderful to watch. Yeah, sure. Bill? Yeah, same thing. I was uh, I was sort of impressed with 99% and how much light was still here, yeah. and then the temperature dropped. Yeah. So it seemed like somebody turned on the AC. Yeah, of course, so. <laughs> of course. Yeah, it did get a little chilly over here as well. Um, I, I heard from before you weren't able to watch the 2017 eclipse. Bill, were you able to watch the 2017 eclipse? I was probably taking care of patients in my clinic, so it probably I missed it all. So it's like I so I figured they said. 20 more years, I'm 67, I should probably try to catch this one. So. Of, course, of course. And you said you came from Chicago, correct? Did you come down? Uh, yeah, Dyer. Indiana, Perfect. Did yeah. you come down just for this event or were you on campus for something else? No, we came down specifically for this and then we're going back home to cheer on the Boilermakers. Wonderful. Thank you. And then, um, so what were some moments during this solar eclipse that were just like memorable? Like what are some, some memories that you've made today while watching the solar eclipse? I mean, really, it's just there are so many people here and everybody's celebrating and having a great time. Um, the fact that it's still dark out is hilarious to me. Um, other than that, you know, spending time with the people I know and people I'm close with, mm -hmm. and it's just been a really good time. And I know you were here with your wife as well. You were in lawn chairs almost at noon today, so you've been here for a couple of hours getting really, really good seats. <laughs> yeah, we came so early. She was asking me, it's like, are you sure this is it? And it's like, so, but yeah, we were here really early, parked our stuff, and then we just loitered around the campus for a while. So. Wonderful. And yeah, the, the big game is happening tonight. So do you think that it is superstition that, you know, both the solar eclipse and the game, do you think it's a destined for Purdue to win tonight? I'm only a little stitious. I'm not superstitious, but yes. Okay. All I right. do think so. You do think so, Bill? All right. In 69. Okay. All right. That was the last time we were in a championship game. All right. We were minus a center, and there was no eclipse. Now we have a center and the best player in the country, and we got an eclipse. So I figure if the earth and the moon and the sun can line up for four minutes, Hopefully the, the Purdue basketball players can line up their eye, the ball, and and the uh, hoop for 40 minutes. That would be that? fantastic. I'm hoping for a, for a huge win today. Um, but again, thank you, Jack. Thank you, Bill, so much for joining us thank today. You, Jared. Uh, Veda, send it back to you. All right, and as you can see, before we wrap up our live coverage today, students are really starting to trickle their way out. So if you are headed out, traffic is certainly going to be heavy today. Right. right. But thank you so much for tuning in to our special live coverage of the Great American Solar Eclipse, presented by the Brian Land School of Communication. And before we wrap up, we want to extend a huge thank you to the broadcast performance team and the live production team for their hard work today for making the show possible. Right. And looking ahead, we do have a couple more solar eclipses at all the way in 2044 and then another in 2045. But for today, we are going to be moving on from this point to celebrate our Purdue National Basketball Men's Championship game. Yeah, keeping our fingers crossed for hopefully a nice outcome today. But right. again, thank you so much for tuning in to the Great American Solar Eclipse live coverage brought to you by the Brian Lamb School of Communication. I'm Julia Prickett. And I'm Beta Kirsch. Boiler up. Hammer down.